Good morning. You are most welcome to join us for worship today, whether you are joining us remotely, following the service during the coming week. But today, you are particularly welcome if you are actually joining us in this building. When I stood here about six weeks ago, I said, Happy New Year. Today, it's Happy Birthday. Not to an individual, as far as I know, unless anyone here has a birthday today. It is Happy Birthday to our church, opened on the second Sunday of October, 54 years ago. We're delighted that our minister, Chris Priest, is with us today to lead our worship and Holy Communion. And so, let us pause for a moment to reflect in gratitude for the past and the present and our hopes for the future. Morning, everyone. It's wonderful to be with you, especially on this anniversary Sunday, where we're focusing, yes, on looking back, but also on looking forward. Our call to worship. We gather looking back to see the paths taken, looking forward to see our path to come. We honour those who have gone before us, learning from their successes and failures. We celebrate who we are today and welcome the possibilities and opportunities before us. We gather to worship God, the God of yesterday, today and tomorrow. We come to our first hymn, which is 409, as we sing, let us build a house where love can dwell. And remember that all are welcome.
So let us come and pray together. Glorious and gracious God, as we meet here, we praise you for the constancy, compassion and grace that you show to all people. May all know they are truly and safely welcomed into your house as we offer you our worship and praise. You created the world and formed us all in your likeness and so began our story of life with you. You sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to the world, so we may join in your story of life in new ways. And now the Holy Spirit lives in and between us, so that we know you through all our days and on into eternity. Through your actions in the world, you build your kingdom once again. You open our eyes to see the world not just as it is, but also as you meant it to be. We praise you that your presence and power transform the world and the lives of your people, giving new meaning to all we do. As we offer you the stories of our lives, we know there have been times where we've not honoured you as we should in our thoughts, words and actions. Lord, we come and seek forgiveness from you now in a moment of quiet. We hear the gracious words of Jesus say, your sins are forgiven. And so we rejoice in the new start we have with you once again. We offer you these, our prayers, in the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As I was preparing for this service, I realised that I was in quite an unusual position. I don't know many ministers who have two-thirds of the churches that they look after that began in living memory. If I remember back to my dad's church in the local village, the most modern part of that building is the 15th century porch. I think we can be fairly certain that no one from the time at which even the porch was built is still with us. But isn't it lovely that today we can celebrate our church anniversary and celebrate it with some of those who were here, both at the start of this church's story and also back when the church was on Culver Street. So I did take the opportunity to ask Chris if he would like to do the all-age talk this morning because I thought, well, I've not been here 54 years. Uh, I've been here two years. And Chris knows, if you want to know something about the history of the church, Chris is one of the people you approach. There's a good handful of people where you go, ah, random question moment. But Chris has got a really good understanding and is full of stories. So I'm going to invite him to do the all-age talk today. So I'm going to sit down and have fun as well. Thank you. I'd like to come to the front, come over this side, because I'm going to stay put where I am. As though it's all age, it's good to have the you young people come over this side next to me. That's right. I'm not. I don't bite. Wow. <laughs> Excellent. It's good to see you. Now, who likes history? Oh, yes. One. Do you have history lessons at school? Have you learnt about the Romans? who once ruled Britain. Oh, so you know about the Romans. And Camelodunum was their capital, which is now known as Colchester. That's right, well done. We live in a city that's steeped in history. Wherever you turn, you can find buildings and places that can tell us stories of times past, how people lived and what they did. And of course we only have to look out of the large window at the back 
to see the Norman castle that was built in the, in the 11th century. That was built on the remains of a Roman temple from when the Roman, this was the Roman capital. So as you can see, we're surrounded by history. Who can tell me what we're celebrating here today at Castle? Chris just mentioned it. Come on, this is an all-age talk, adults. <laughs> birthday, that's right. This church's birthday. We're celebrating this church's birthday as we've been worshipping here for the last 54 years. Now, when this church opened in 1970, we as Methodists felt like we were coming home as the first Methodist church was, which had been built in Colchester had been built very close to where we're sitting now. We're not sure whether it uh, was underneath where we are now or underneath the flats next door or perhaps just a little bit further down the street. But somewhere in this area was the very first Methodist church that was opened 275 years ago in 1759. And John Wesley, the great preacher, preached for the first time in the December of that year. And then in the following years, when he preached there, he preached from that wooden pulpit that stands over by the side of the church. That's our piece of original Methodist history that we carry on. And when the congregation outgrew that first building, they built a new church in Culver Street, as you can see in the picture. That was the very first one. There was a fire, and then they had to rebuild it. But they worshipped there for the next 134 years. This church was built to allow the development of the Culver Precinct. I only attended the very last two services at Culver Street because my parents and I moved to, directly to this church where my parents were the first caretakers, so we lived upstairs. And as Chris said earlier, we do have people in our congregation today who worshipped at uh, Culver Street for some years. They're all part of the Methodist ongoing family. Of course, they were very young when they were at Culver Street. <laughs> I have been part of this church's history, like you are all part of this church's history. I have witnessed many changes that have taken place over the last 54 years. In those early years of Castle, some of the members who'd moved from Culver Street found it very difficult to adjust to their new surroundings and would continually compare the old with the new. They would refer to the good old days of Culver Street. Now, I found their views quite surprising as I was a young teenager and was in awe of this amazing building, its artwork, its colour, its versatility. For me, it was a wonderful place to come and worship. What you and I did yesterday is history. We cannot change it. We can only learn from it. We can celebrate the days that went really well and we did what we'd planned to do and had an enjoyable time. But sometimes we messed up. Sometimes we have to say sorry. But then we put those days behind us and that made a fresh start the next day. As wonderful and as beautiful as this church building is, 
This church is you and is me and is in everybody here and those of our church family who can't be with us today. We are the church and your place in it is just as important as mine. Last Sunday, Sally invited you to write your names on pieces of paper, which were then formed into links and then made into a chain, a chain of friendship. If I was to make a chain of friendship using the names of all the people of this church who over the last 54 years had made a difference in my life, and my Christian journey, then I'm sure it would encircle the whole building. The church family here has and continues to make a difference in my life for the better, and a difference in each other's lives too. My hope for you young people is that you also experience the same love and care within this church family as you continue on your Christian journey and experience the ultimate love of Jesus. So let's have a word of prayer. Loving God, we thank you that we can meet here today to come to worship you in this magnificent building. We pray that your love will enter our hearts, that we may support one another each and every day. May your spirit move among us in all that we do. May all we do be to your praise and glory. We thank you for our young people. May they see in us older people your light shining each and every day. All this we ask in Jesus' name, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. So thank you for coming and listening to me once again. And I hope you have a good time in your junior church this morning. And Chris. <laughs> and thank you, Chris, for giving us a story and an outline that we could not have done or certainly I couldn't have done but isn't it lovely that friendship is not just a building it is about the friendship and all of us coming together and sharing with one another and it is that which makes our story and so we're going to sing 548 blessed assurance Jesus is mine as we reflect on this is my story this is my song praising my saviour all the day long
Our first New Testament reading is taken from Philippines, chapter 3, verses 12 to 16. Pressing on towards the goal. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that which Jesus Christ took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me, heavenwards in Jesus Christ. All of us who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. Our second reading is taken from Luke, chapter 4, verses 14 to 21. Jesus rejected at Nazareth. <clears throat> Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He taught in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on a Sabbath day, he went to the synagogue, as was his custom, and he stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim his freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the air of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Before we reflect on those readings, we're going to sing again. Um, Jane, who was the steward at the beginning of the service, wrote the words for this hymn, especially for church anniversaries. So it is a tune that we know, so don't worry about the tune, but for the children who have come here, let's stand and sing.
Let's pray together. Loving Lord, as we look back, we know that your constancy is always there and always will be. May you speak to us in the present and prepare us for the future. May we hear the words that we need to hear today and we pray in your name. Amen. As we've started to say, we think of, when we think of anniversaries, it's often to look back over a period of time and reflect on all that has happened. In our case today, we have 54 years to look back on. There are many buildings where people cannot look back in living memory to the time where the church in which they worship was first opened. But that's not the case, as we know. We need to be grateful for the memories we have and to treasure them. To some degree, we are formed by our memories. Sometimes these are through times of joy, at other times of sorrow or difficulty. But an anniversary is often a time to take stock and to reflect on all that has happened. Our memories, in whatever form they take, are part of what creates our heritage. Our heritage comes through our knowledge of the city, the church, the move of the church within the city, the changes that have come, all that is in the building, but most of all through the stories of faith that have come through the people who have faithfully worshipped here. Our heritage is about our looking back to all that God has done, is doing, and how that paves the way for our future. Our stories of life and faith are important. We are shaped by God through our openness to Jesus and the Holy Spirit in our lives and how we respond to God through them. Through the Gospel reading, we see something of Jesus' story. The first thing we can pick up from our passage is that Jesus has returned to Galilee. He's just been in the wilderness where he's been tempted by the devil, which is the passage we often consider at the beginning of Lent. Jesus is returning to Nazareth and now he's teaching in the synagogue. Jesus is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, who is sustaining him in this time and in the particular part of his story that is being shared in the synagogue. It is here that he reads the words of the prophet Isaiah, a prophet whose words are recorded in the Old Testament, which is very much in the past. Yet he's taking the words of the past and allowing them to speak into the present. These words are sometimes called Jesus' mission statement as they act as a reminder of the things that Jesus was called to do. Jesus brings the good news of salvation, releases those in captivity, brings spiritual freedom and helps those who are oppressed in any way. These are true of us as disciples today. The words might act as a metaphor, but there are many who don't yet know Jesus for themselves, who are captive in their circumstances, who need there to be a sense of justice in the world and for all of us to have the spiritual freedom to exercise our faith in the way that God has called us to do. The words of Isaiah needed to be heard when they were written, in the time of Jesus, and today. Jesus was sharing these words in the context of worship in the synagogue, just as we are sharing in worship too. Our worship is where we come to learn from God as a community of God's people, to experience the love of Christ, and to be strengthened by the Holy Spirit for the days to come. When we share in communion a little later, we will do so knowing that we are connected to each other and to the whole company of heaven. Having quoted from Isaiah, Jesus ends by saying that today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. This is not included in Isaiah and is a direct reference to, that Jesus is making to himself as the Son of God. 
Jesus is acknowledging in his hometown that he is the saviour of the world. Whilst this is picked up by some of the congregation there, the full implications of it are not understood. We have the privilege today of knowing that Jesus has died and risen again, so that we may be at one with him, united to him, and empowered by the Holy Spirit. To know that all who turn to Jesus are assured of eternal life is such a comfort and is the message we need to be sharing with others so that they may know it too. As we meet for this anniversary service, we look back to all that God has done for us in Jesus, knowing that the words of Scripture are indeed fulfilled in him. We can rejoice that in the words of that in knowing that constant message that we are there and hear from him. It is in times of change that we need to hold on to our faith and in what we believe of Jesus. This will help us to sustain us as we find the things of change around us. We can look back to situations in the past and they won't change. We can also look to Jesus who is a sure and certain presence for us. The message and good news of salvation will not change, but our circumstances can. As a church, we faced a time of change over the past few months. This stemmed from the way of the changes we've experienced in the use of the building. But the conversations also started with what is our mission and how best can we fulfill what we believe God is calling us to. We know that many people give up a huge amount of time to support the church, and so much of this is in the background. We are and remain so very thankful for all of that work. We also know that we must make the best of our city centre location to enable the mission of standing alongside others in different ways and to facilitate the work of other organisations, such as Bridgeway, with whom we have such a close connection. We continue to reflect on our mission as a church and how best to partner with God and in God's work here in Colchester at this time. We know that change is an ongoing feature of life and it's one we can find hard to come to terms with. At the same time, our Philippians reading encourages us to continue on the journey of faith as individuals and as a worshipping community. We know that in turning to Jesus, we are assured of the gift of salvation through his grace shown to us on the cross. Yet throughout our lives, we seek to become more like Christ in the way we live and work. We seek to develop in our personal faith and to witness to that through our worship and our outreach to others in the surrounding community. We know from some of the recent services looking at the book of James that what we say and how we live need to match. We know this to be true, although it isn't always easy to achieve. Part of our looking forward is to accept the ways in which God nudges us into new ways of sharing his message of love and grace, care and compassion to others. We press on, as Paul puts it, in Philippians to do this. We are shaped as individuals and as a church by God. If we are open to all that Jesus is asking of us and our hearts are open to the Holy Spirit, then we will go to some great places and others will become able to know Jesus for themselves. As we look at all Jesus has done for us, we know that we are being shaped for the future. We need to stay close to God as individuals and as a church. We also need to reach out to others through the people we are, as well as what we do. The mission statement of Jesus asks us to share the good news of salvation with others. We do that, be it in words or actions or both. 
but it's important that we focus on it, not just when we're here, but all of the time. To echo the Philippians reading, we must look forward to all that lies ahead and the heavenly prize of being with God in Jesus. This is the good news of Christ we are seeking to share, and we can know it now as well as in eternity. There are those who feel they are captive to their circumstances or who are oppressed in some way. We can come alongside them here through our open house or in our everyday lives, in the things we do and in the places we go. We may not be able to change things directly, but we can be there for people. We can pray with them and for them. Bringing such situations before God is important and an important witness to the faith we have. Prayer helps to change things for the future. Jesus says that the scripture of Isaiah that he has shared is fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus is not just reminding those listening and us today that he is the embodiment of the scripture. He is also showing the partnership there is between him and God the Father. He is recognising that his calling in the world was to partner with God, to bring the good news, help people to move from spiritual blindness to sight, to exercise justice, and to help people to live a full life in Christ. Today, through Christ, God is seeking to partner with us to do this. As we listen to God, we will be empowered by the Spirit to serve God here in this place, to enable the church here to be a sign and witness to God. It is also a place where others may come to know God for themselves and seek and develop a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It is a place where the present is transformed for the future as we seek God's kingdom to come in all its fullness. As we celebrate today the 54 years we have been here, it is right that we give thanks to God for this. We give thanks for everyone here today who is part of the church, as well as all those who have gone before us to lead the way to today. We also have a responsibility to partner with God, to do Christ's work in the world, and to be led by the Holy Spirit so that the foundations for the future are laid. It is right to celebrate and also to accept the challenge of God's mission for this place at this time here in Colchester today. We do all this in the strength of Christ who calls us to this work. Amen. And so we sing, God's Spirit is in my heart.
see what you have to say. As we come to our prayers, when I say, Lord, in your mercy, please can you join with here our prayer. So let us pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, whose spirit helps us in our weakness and guides us in our prayers, we pray for the church and for the world in the name of Jesus Christ. Renew the life and faith of the church. Strengthen our witness and make us one in Christ. Grant that we and all who confess that Christ is Lord may be faithful in your service and filled with the Spirit, that the world may be turned to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the nations in the ways of justice, liberty and peace and help them to seek the unity and welfare of all people. Give to all in authority wisdom to know and strength to do what is right. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort those in sorrow. Heal the sick in body or in mind and deliver the oppressed. Grant us compassion for all who suffer and help us so to carry one another's burdens that we may fulfil the law of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks and praise for all who have served you faithfully here on earth, and especially those who have revealed to us your grace in Christ. May we and all your people share the life and joy of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I encourage us to stand as we're able as we come to share the peace with one another. Please feel free to join in with the words in red. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. Let us therefore keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And we greet each other as we're comfortable to do. come to our communion hymn which I think may be new to some of us. It is written by a currently serving Methodist minister 
Um, and so we sing Jesus' invitation to us. Come, my table is a meeting place. So let us pray. Loving Lord, we bring you these offerings today here for your work here in this place. We give you thanks for all that is past, the foundations that have been laid, and we pray that you will give wisdom to the use for the future of these gifts. And we each offer ourselves our gifts, our skills, our talents in service to you. Take us, Lord, as we are. Form us as your disciples and send us out to work for justice in your world. And we offer these prayers in the name of Christ. Amen. Please take a seat. We come now to, and turn to communion where we will share together. When we come to the elements of the bread and the wine, please remain in your seats. These will be brought to you. And we tend to wait and hold the bread and, and eat together and then take the non-alcoholic wine and drink together. But we come here and we come at Christ's invitation to us all. This is for all of us to come to meet Jesus, 
to be strengthened by him and to be nourished for the days ahead. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, gracious and holy Father, always and everywhere to give you thanks. In the beginning, your spirit swept across the face of the waters, bringing order and beauty out of chaos. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. Though we turned away from you, your love remained steadfast, and you sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Saviour of the world. At his baptism in the Jordan, he was anointed by your Spirit and revealed as your beloved Son. In the power of the Spirit, he was sent to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. Sharing our human nature, he died on the cross, raised again in glory, he lives forever to pray for us. By the gift of the Spirit, whom you have sent in his name, you bring to completion the work of your Son, leading us into all truth, making us a people for your praise and giving us power to proclaim the gospel in all the world. And so, with all the faithful of every time and place, we join with choirs of angels in the eternal hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> On the night before he died, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. He gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of all his mighty acts, we offer you these gifts and with them ourselves as a holy, living sacrifice. You send forth your spirit. You bind us in love. You renew the face of the earth. Pour out your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of Christ. Unite us with him and with one another in mission to all the world and bring us with the whole creation to your heavenly kingdom. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And we say together the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So I invite those who are helping to come forward. body of Christ to keep you in eternal life we take and eat. Amen.
the blood of Christ to keep you in eternal life, we take and drink. Amen. I will pray before we pray the prayer on the screen. Lord of all the years, we thank you that your hand has kept and guided us. We know that your presence is always with us and that you will guide us through your spirit into the future. We thank you, Lord, that your presence is there that we may learn from you and be sent out for you. And so we pray together, God of power, may the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us and the gifts of your spirit equip us to serve and worship you now and always. Amen. We come to our final hymn. Well done. I know that um, the lack of heating has um, made for a chillier morning, but you will also be pleased to know that there was a very warm welcome next door, lots of hot coffee, and of course we have to have a cake. So we have lots of cake that will soon get us warm as well. But let's sing together, Will You Come and Follow Me?
so may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love now and forever. Amen. <laughs>